Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Mike O'Mara Show for the middle of the week, Wednesday. Uh, fascinating week of shows because every time we have uh, signed on... Oh, incidentally, do you like the uh, the blue blue? The blue hat to match my eyes? Do you like that one? It makes your eyes pop, other? Mike. Did it you does. guys get your hats yet? Not, Not yet. yet. Probably tomorrow. Probably I tomorrow you'll so. get them. I hope mm-hmm. you get them tomorrow. Uh, this is the blue version of the TMOS hat. Uh, you'll see it's got blue. It's got uh, the Mike O'Mara Show logo on the back. It's got an adjustable Velcro strap. And it's got Flex Fit. And they go on sale Friday morning at 9 a.m. So get, get them often. That's our new awesome. slogan? No. Are, are, the, we replacing, are we replacing if you don't buy it, we won't sell it with get them often? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, just glad to be. You know what? I'm just glad to be on the right side of the grass. That's the way I look at it every single Atta day. boy, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so let's start. Um, I don't know anything that really goes on up in uh, Washington, D.C., because I'm down here, and uh, we never really, really explain it, but there are two entities that, in a very general way, we're associated with on TMOS. One is the Mike O'Mara Show, which you know and love each and every day, and the other is where uh, a lot of our content uh, is disseminated and where one of our principals records from usually, and that's Podville Media, which is up in Washington, D.C. In this in this shot, I see yesterday yes. you were in one studio. Correct. The, the first day you were in an hour studio, mm-hmm. and now I said, well, where are you today? Where and are we? It looks like you're in a... You're in a record room or something. That, that, that would look like Rob's home. Right Where there. in the world is Oscar Santana? Yeah. Right. I, what I've learned is that um, in the world of offices, corporate offices, and I didn't know this because when we worked in just radio, it was just always like a, a garbage can we worked He's in. He's going to have to be turned up, Mac, or somebody's going to have to turn I can speak up louder. It's fine. Okay. Um, in the world of, of office space, the one thing I've learned in the past five years is that you can customize an office and you're just bound by your budget. And when we worked in radio, everybody's office looked like garbage. Well, the, the salespeople had, in most of the radio stations I worked uh, at, they had uh, cubicles. Correct. And at WJFK, terrible. a lot of the sales cubicles had no chairs because people would steal the chairs to go in the lunchroom. We had more desks than chairs. So a lot of times the cubicles were really, literally cubicles, no chairs. Yeah. So you fast forward into corporate America where I currently am placed in. And when I see an office, I just think that office is, is just going to look like that. And you get what you get and you don't get upset. <laughs> and the one thing that Charlie Bernie taught me is that if you can pay for it, they'll make it look like anything. Yeah. And he wanted his to look like a record shop. So that's where I am right now. Well, the, the he- Podville Media Studios are a lovely uh, looking gorgeous facility. You know? Yes, they're really, they're but gorgeous. Gorgeous. They, they, yeah, they're a real knockout, as Rod likes to say. Jesus, I can't even compliment anybody anymore. I'm gonna turn my mic off. So um, today I'm in, I'm here because there are three other productions going on in the main studios. Mm. So with the three o'clock change, I didn't want to say we couldn't do the three o'clock change to record. So I said I'll just do it out of Charlie's office. That's cool. Which and he has a studio set up in front of me here, so he he yeah, typically he does, takes he does uh, digital content correct, all the correct. time from there. Yeah. So he has a full cool. like full studio set up on the other side of this wall, and I asked him. I said, "Do you mind if at three o'clock I take a meeting inside your office?" And he said, "You've never asked me that." I said, "Well, I have to do the Michael Mara show, <laughs> and I would rather do it." Did it was it taking a, a meeting or doing the Michael Mara show? This is a meeting. Okay, so you said yes. initially take a meeting? Of course. I didn't want to say the Michael Mara show and him say no. And then I said, well, the meeting's the Michael Mara show. Oh, so you were keeping it vague to increase your yeah, chances he of does success. That. The, prob- the probability yeah. to close. Mm-hmm. Because, <laughs> there you, go. you know, to be a friend, you have to be a friend. I've always said this. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand any of this, but that's okay. But Mike, um, he, was, he was very, thank- he was thankful I showed him your text thread that you sent him about yeah charlie's, charlie's got book. a book and uh i want him to come on and talk about it because it's uh the tau 
of uh, podcasting and uh, available I, on Amazon. I, it's brilliant. I, I don't know uh, any. You've read it, Rob? Yes, absolutely. What he does is he draws parallels between the actual Dow. You're in this Taoism. You're and, in the book. And Mike, you are in it too. Pictures of you are in it. But it draws parallels between Taoism, which his brother introduced him to. And podcasting. Yeah. And the parallels are amazing. It's, it's a love letter to podcasting. It really is. Well, he's a, he's, we, we found Charlie because Charlie was, uh, had a love of this digital media that we are so involved with and we were involved with so early. And that's where the marriage started. And then Oscar went into business uh, with Charlie. And uh, Charlie five has years. been... How, five years. Five has, years. It seems like it's been longer than that. Five years he's been our essentially our landlord, and uh, and then Podville Media. Oscar is the uh, CEO of Podville Media, and uh, they do digital content. I tell people all the time for uh, so many entities, I can't mm-hmm. name them right here, and that's that. So, uh, Would you like to see a, a sneak peek, Mike, an exclusive? Exclusive? Is, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to send a picture to Mac, and Mac, you can put it up. This is great. This is a great way to drive people to video. Okay. Mike. Sure. Uh, and Mac, I don't know if you've seen this picture either, but uh, we have a new studio we're building, and um, I think you're going to be extremely impressed. This is just in the works; it's a little rough. You're talking to uh, me now. Yes, I'm talking okay. to you. All right, this and, is. I, I think you've you've mentioned it before, but I, uh, I I'm excited about this. And um, let me, so Mac, I'm sending this to your Podville address. You know Please what, do? Mike? I covet. I covet. Charlie's record shelves. What do when they I do, look at them? Clarice? They covet. <laughs> they covet. Best use the best use of the word covet in a film. I believe was, you're right. Uh, was that you know? But yeah. those are some. That's exactly it. for the collector that means it. That's what he's got. I've got shop shelves, and they work. But records are so heavy. When you get something custom like that, it is a. That's a. You know what? That is a knockout. That is gorgeous right there. Does I vinyl just, and vinyl lasts. You know, they talk about of course CDs not lasting that long. And CDs, uh, the I'm going to pull a random record out. You tell me, if you guys know it or okay. understand it? All right, okay. go ahead. So he's got real records back. Yeah, there. and he's got a record player in his office, which is so cool. Right, hold on, hold it up to me. Sleepy John Estes. It's blues. It's a blues. Right, Charlie loves the blues. I don't know that album. Like the blues. Does it say blues on the front of it? Yeah, it says it's called Brownsville Blues. Okay, well that's why you said blues. You made it sound like you knew what it was. Know it? I've got it. The Muppet Muppet Show. Show. Yeah, I. You have that that record? I do, as a matter of fact. Yes. All right. Last one. Okay, I'm one for two. Quite a an eclectic collection so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who is this? Is that Badfinger? I don't know who that is. Can you read on the spine? This gentleman. Can you read on the spine what it is? Uh, I didn't know there was print on spines of records. Oh, God, you're so young. Yeah. It says 1808 James, two of a kind. Who knows? Got no idea. That was one more. I don't want to end on that one. Yeah. yeah, I love that cover. Though. How about something with a with you know a little more modern, maybe? Oscar didn't know there was writing on the spines, Mike. <laughs> Who's this? Joe Walsh, of course. Joe Walsh, oh, fantastic album. Yeah. Well, yeah. America's Most Wanted. Read, read the back of the album no. and, and put some of the hits on there, all right? Uh, say some of the hits. It'll help Okay, you, uh, I got uh, side one, Rocky Mountain Way. Rocky of Mountain course. Way. Everybody yeah. in the world knows that song. Mm-hmm. Santa Fountain, Rocky. <laughs> Bookends. Bookends, I think that's Rocky a cover. Rocky Mountain Way <laughs> couldn't get much higher. <laughs> well done well okay. done uh Thank the you. hits i know there's a bunch of records here i'm, I'm not sure all right well there. that's that's uh, very very exciting that is awesome. so the last time mike and i were on and we're, we were recording the afternoon this is monday uh mike said is that jackhammering i am hearing and i said yes yeah. it's jackhammering and yeah. on the, majority- the show prep this week i said uh, i wonder if oscar's worried about the uh floor <laughs> collapsing yes um so for the better part of a year and a half we have been working under not the most I- ideal circumstances because there's been a ton of construction on the building. The building looks beautiful. It's amazing. It's phenomenal. Um, it, it, it's it's a, what they call a trophy building now. The un, the They're like a the un, trophy wife. The un, yes, the unfortunate side, but cheaper. Um, is that 
they're now done with all the construction around our floors. Yes. And they are now prepared to demolish both the third and fourth floor that we, you know, we've been telegraphed to told us for some time. So they will be demolishing the third and fourth floor, which we're on, uh, in little less than 15 days. So this entire time, uh, for the past two months, we have been preparing for a move and we are moving, uh, for those of you who are Fans of the state of Maryland and fans of the District of Columbia, we're now going to be a two-hub operation. We'll be moving to the city of Rockville. and Classic Rockville. Yeah, classic Rockville. Beautiful location. Um, 13,000 square feet. It's a massive operation. Is that bigger than your house? Yes, it is. Okay. And then we are also moving to... Uh, Broadcast studios right around the corner here uh, that actually have sound stages. And uh, Mac, you should have gotten the picture by now. Uh, we, and if you will, oh, there it is. Uh, Mike, and for the entire world, this is the first preview of what we have in the new studios at the sound in the sound stages. That done already? That That's done. Oh, because that's what you were doing. Can I say it? That's what you're doing this weekend, right? Correct. Okay. All right. I get it now. So that uh, is a full Mandalorian wall that will be run by the Unreal Engine, and that's just staging out for one of the productions we'll have in that studio. What that's is the awesome. Unreal Engine, and what is the that, Mandalorian? You know, I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to attempt to explain it to you. Is this like Baby Yoda stuff? We said no, Mandalorian. No, you're, you're fine. You're fine. It's uh, people that know know, uh, but it's a full video wall, and we have that's the height two of us. Now he's diminished both of us today on the show. Well, I feel about where you I You know what a be. video wall is. You know his yeah, wife but... one his wife warns him not to be too condescending sometimes. Yes, this is I've true. I've been on those meetings she's where she said me. that. I've What's heard that? that. If she's warned me, I've tuned it out as of the president <laughs> of our relationship. I enjoy when Oscar says something leaves Jesus the room Christ. and your Shannon ego, says Your ego is out of control, dude. Somebody's got to love me. Somebody's got to love you. Somebody's got to love you. Yeah, somebody should love you. And yeah. sometimes I, I wonder say, if though. it's Shannon because she calls you a monster all the time. I said to the guys yesterday, there's a video short that's uh, th that's gotten a lot of hits, got a lot of interest, and we sent it out because we love it. killing it. it. Yeah. And it is, uh, it is the three of us when Rob crumples the, picture, the paper, and I hear it, and he doesn't want anybody to know that he was doing that, and he realizes he's in trouble, and he gives us that look. Yeah. And then... He starts talking and giving one of his speeches, which is when he wants total silence, and I crumple a piece of paper jokingly in front of that. And then the, then I start talking again. And at that point, Oscar gets this look on his face and, and just manically crushes a water bottle. And I sent the guys. I was so stupid. I have to get the text. Hold on. This is okay. Because yeah. I sent a message out to everybody about it. it and, was, and just it so was, everybody knows. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to read ahead here. We do this five days a week, this yeah. entire dance. And Every we're proud day. to do it. Yep. And Can I, I talk to Mike for just a second? Sure. sure. Just yeah, one please. Sure, this please. won't take long. Okay? No problem. Right. This way. Yeah. Do you think maybe... What? Do you, what? Do you think maybe you could uh, not set up your personal space like you're in the middle of a fucking F-15 jet fighter and there would be some space and some el elbow room around here? Yes, I will. Thank you. All right, that was uh, my little pep talk for Mike. So the thread last yeah. night, I'm very excited about the short because it was, at the moment, it pissed me off, which probably is why it was so real. Mm -hmm. uh, once I saw it on the show, it made me laugh. And it was all of us doing that. And it's a running I, gag. I love it. Yeah. I, I, it was just fantastic. And um, I, wrote, I wrote to the guys. And I, I said, uh, the YouTube short from today may be my favorite of all time. Please. <laughs> and they produced it. Right. Oscar and Rob. Well, and Matt. Don't read ahead. Just read the text. It's, it's perfect. I said, please check it out if you get a chance. <laughs> Rob writes, because Rob doesn't do conflict. Even though he knew it, he said, I loved it. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Very polite, very kind, yeah. very nice. Oscar wrote, ha ha. We made it. Like, we made it. Not that we made it with the show. They made it. I said, right. I know. Sorry, that was dumb. Oscar says, LOL, love you, man. Really mm -hmm. funny. Hope it goes viral. And I said, I'm sharing it as we speak. It was funny. And it was really, 
Uh, when I posted it a couple of places, I said, it's the essence of this show. It is. It, it absolutely is. It is it completely absolutely. and totally what we are. Stupid, silly, yeah. ball busting, and it was fun. It, yeah, it, it, you me, could have torn me it. one, but it was me with my stupid OCD. I was done with a piece of paper, mm-hmm. and I wanted it out of my way. Yeah. And and then, you know, you take it to the next level, and Oscar caps it. It's perfect. Yeah, this it was is, great. This is what's also fun. So, one, Mike, thank you for owning the fact that you're yeah. like, immediately. Oh, yeah, you I guys did, make I did it. own you it immediately. Didn't, yeah, you didn't even miss a beat. You said, oh, yeah, you guys produce them. Right. You know. <laughs> you know Each and you every day. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> But what I love is first, like I have to give credit where credit is due. It was Rob's idea to set up the get the the gag. Mac produces it, and then I QC it. That's the way that goes every day. Like we QC out what, for those of you is. that might work, uh, you know, somewhere like on a dairy farm somewhere. Mm-hmm. Well, they'd have it there too. It's quality control. Yeah, yeah. So Mac brings it to me, and I just start laughing out loud. Mm-hmm. And he really took the time to craft that social. So good job, yeah. Mac. Great job. Thank you, Mike. And when Matt came to us, uh, and this is Shannon and I, because I was showing Shannon. Mm-hmm. I, like, I actually share with everybody. I'm like, look how funny this is. Cause so funny. They got to care, right? It really was. If, if, if you don't make them love us, who will? Exactly. Uh, and, and Shannon starts laughing, and then Rob Ford starts laughing. And I was like, yeah, this is the show. It's perfect. It is. A- and then Max says, I just wanted to find something so I could be a part of it, which shows me he cares. Yes, yeah. that's good. That's good. Right? He loves the show. He I came to us because he liked the show. I was to not start satisfied with, with that. Uh, but it was great. It was fun, and it's really what we are all about here. And it's why I get up and come into work every day because it's so much fun. That's the that's the fun part. All the other stuff you can have it. Yeah. You can have it, have it. Although there's also fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, I love uh, you know doing the show from different places. I love our merch. I love everything about it. But the real fun is uh, busting chops is this. Uh, yeah. with these guys. So it, it really is spectacular. Was... But you've been a busy beaver. Are you? This is a serious question. Yes. Um. I am sure that there are people with more medical knowledge than me Mm. that would have Mm -hmm. told you that some of the issues you've had, uh, you know, are attributable to going too hard at, uh, you know, the other thing. Not the show. The show's fun. I think I know that I've left the show more relaxed than oh, I came into the happy. show yeah, dozens of times. Yeah. So the Even show on doesn't worst count. Days, it's a I'm happy talking day. about all the other stuff. Are you pacing yourself with all this yeah, I, look, moving and all that? I know you love doing that too, but yeah, you know. I, I, um, oh, a quick programming note. I don't think it, it's not going to affect the show, but I fly out this Friday to Boston, Massachusetts, as I've been invited, uh, to Harvard business school as, um, as Dominic Foxworth's guest, he'll be, um, hosting a panel, and he would like me to meet some of his uh, business associates. Wow, so, which is great, right? But I, wow. but I told him I couldn't fly out till after the show. That's what very a cool. That's what that's a, a confidence, yeah. right? That is that uh, that makes me cry. That yeah. is and, beautiful. And that's I should, I guess, thing. I should say that after the show on Friday, it might spill over into Saturday. I'm going to get my car washed. <laughs> but this is what's great. <laughs> I book my flight. And and I match Foxworth's, itiner- Foxworth's itinerary. Yes, he's leaving in the afternoon on Friday. Yeah, and then coming back in the after in the evening on Saturday. Because that's how he rolls. That's how he rolls. Mm-hmm. Is is that uh, you know? Were you thinking you wanted to make a weekend of it up there with your family? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, I get that. I, and I then because 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 uh, they love me and I love them and I called my brother and I was like, hey. Uh, I'll be in town. I can meet you in the lobby for an hour if you want to say hi. But otherwise, it's a work trip. I thought I'd be able to stay a little longer, but say la vie. Because you're matching him. You're going to yeah. be hanging with him, and that's the polite thing to do. Yeah, I'm not going to be know. like, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Well, Something you know I did not master during the Don and Mike show years when we would be on a road trip and I would make my own arrangements too. Yeah. You know, as soon as that, that I five shall o'clock never whistle forget. went off, I'd be on the next plane out of there. Love Mike. you guys, but don't want to hang with you. Bye. But then also, you weren't real big on hanging with us at the destination. I do remember so clearly, like yesterday, seeing you across one of the squares at New Orleans, just waving to us <laughs> and then going on your way. <laughs> do you, uh, and we got to be careful here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you remember when we were all supposed to meet at Desire Cafe in the quarter? Yeah, of course. Do you remember that time? 
when I, I do. When, when I when I separated from you at about I want to say three thirty in the afternoon, mm-hmm. and we were going to meet at seven o'clock for dinner. You yes. Remember that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty good, wasn't it? That was great for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I wish I could give more. I, I really do. wish that and, I and could no, give Oscar, more. And no, Oscar, that I that the story I told was also very vague. Got I it. just want you to know that. <laughs> but I like yeah, doing my own thing when I go to the big city. We come from an age when we literally had, not just used, but Oscar, we had a travel agent. Yeah. And then that went away because the internet killed all travel agencies. Mm-hmm. And right. Mike said, well, you do what you do, but I'm doing me. I would and- rearrange. I would rearrange for the whole team. Travel. Yes, true. I could you have would. been a very good travel agent because yeah. you know you would say, well, like for example, uh, you know, with the with the dollar being the most important factor, mm-hmm. quite often the travel agency out of New York City for CBS Radio would say, hmm. So you're going to Wichita, Kansas. I'm going to route you through Kuala Lumpur. Exactly. Uh, it was uh, it was just you know, pain and also that. knowing for every Super Bowl trip, not just paying for the flight, but getting a flight was an issue. Yeah. Sometimes and getting a you know, hotel room was an issue. Oh, too. the hotel room was even worse, but we'd yeah. have to fly in sometimes Tuesday night yeah. to find a flight. Right. And uh it was, And also it, because you'd have to book a week of hotels to uh do Yeah, that. there was a minimum. There was a minimum that you had to book in the But I'll uh, tell you after that last show towards the end of the uh Super Bowl broadcast after that last show on Friday. Mm-hmm. Hey, enjoy the big weekend. We're going to have a great time this weekend as I get off the air and go to the airport and fly home. Your shirt never touched your back. And you know what? If I had been a wiser man, I would have been there with I you. I did. I want to say it was either Dallas or Houston, but I think it was Dallas. I did one Monday departure after the Super Bowl. Ugh. And at that point said, I will never, ever do this again. And it was Atlanta. Now I remember it. It was Atlanta. Atlanta was, uh, you were stuck with an ice storm there one time, right? That's right. It snowed yeah. on the Super Bowl weekend. I remember But, that. I mean, to be at the, the first couple of them, it's exciting. You know, I think the first one might have been uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. I and, think you're uh, right. We yeah. slid in to a gentleman's club in back of Sinbad who was making it rain. It was it was something else. Sinbad at that point, Apex A list celebrity A-list. sighting. Yes, of Absolutely. course. And they has had health problems and also I hope he's strokes doing no much joke. Better. He had yeah. one too. Mm. Yeah. You that's too? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You so, had a anyway. stroke too? So you, uh, you're pacing yourself and you're yeah. getting her all done and Charlie's yeah, going to come on the show when he gets a chance. I'm Charlie excited Bernie. to walk on campus and like, I've only walked, driven past Harvard. I've never actually, I'm excited to see what the business school is all about. I'm excited to see, uh, you know, what type of panels they have. This is going to be for sports entertainment, which will be fun, but to see what people have to say, what the future is. Well, my uh, brother-in-law is a graduate of Harvard Business School, and uh, it's rarefied air up there. Do you think he wants to come? Uh, he's not going to be. I don't think he'll be in Boston that weekend, but they might. What about be. Kathy? Don't they live downtown? They live. They could walk. They maybe could probably we'll, walk maybe over. I'll, maybe and we'll see take him out. Take him out. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, you said that would mean you've seen more of her than I have this winter. <laughs> That's the way it goes. My brother's actually going to San Diego, so no comp, no conflicts. We're good. Oh, good, good. Okay, uh, good stuff. Um, I do want to say that uh, the weekend activities that I engage in when I am not hitting the little white egg are usually mundane mm-hmm. trips to uh, get groceries and go to big box stores. And this might be controversial. This was a source of great content on the show years ago. But I have a proposal down here in the land of blue hair and snowbirds and entitlement, stop giving out free samples. Stop giving it. It's a cornerstone, I know, of your business model, Costco. But I have to say to you, it no longer is. If you have a balls-to-the-wall store on a Saturday, which is your prime give-out sample day, Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't work for those of us that don't necessarily have to have the corner of the Pop-Tart. We just like to get our shopping done. Just stop doing that, and I think you would be uh, amazed. And you know that there's if there's anything, there are two things that senior citizens like, and Lord knows I am one of them. I've yeah. joined an organization to prove it that I will discuss with you. Uh, the AARP, I am now a card-carrying member for the first time in my life. But there are two things senior citizens love, fried chicken, <laughs> and free samples of food. You're right. I've seen and, older people that actually say, we're going to Costco to get lunch today, 
Yeah. And they just parade around it's and terrible. load up on sale. But, Mike, you know, if you go with this, you're going to remove this. Coming in now, what did it say? Yummy, yummy. She is. So you let you Sample give her out. Her. Yeah, her name was Sunny. Do you remember her? She doesn't work there anymore? I haven't seen her in years. Would she be dead? No, I think she's probably been promoted. I don't know. I don't know if she's dead or not. Well, I, mean, I based well, the that on that's, that's game basically, she was gone. That's yeah, me true. asking you how old she was when you recorded that. She was not old enough to be in death camp. Yet. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. I, I'm yeah. just curious about that. Now, you... That's your regular store. That's yes. the most convenient store mm-hmm. to you. How do you feel about that proposal? Uh, I see your point, and I don't feel I benefit enough from the samples that I'm going to make a, a fist and say you're wrong. But there are people that would be wicked pissed. But if there the are samples no samples, in my opinion, where you can say, wow. I will not. They're not going to hand that out anymore. They're never. It's always the crap they just want to move off the shelves. Oh, right? well, Mike, sometimes it's new products and you <laughs> wouldn't be introduced to them. I found a new salad products. dressing. Oh, my God. Oh, God. That was go. great. And I probably wouldn't have known. How did they it. present it to you in the free samples? Did they put it on a human finger they, and have they, you lick it off when you walk by? It's, have you ever seen uh, when they do a shot? contest on a boat down in the bahamas <laughs> i have to get down on my knees well there's no. something in the uh, round table about that today uh that's really great you might have the video of it as well of uh speaking of shots but i have to say i think uh, mike actually to answer your question it was mixed with pasta okay the salad and, dressing yeah and which you can do like if think of like a vinegar and oil salad dressing is not like doing a vinegar and oil on pasta. was it a diet salad dressing certainly not it was uh <laughs> so you're talking it was like a pasta salad yeah, but this it's uh the what is it? And I don't like the place, but it's the Olive Garden Italian dressing and it's great. You are you are something else. Well, I mean You are an easy God's man honest to truth. That's your tr- that that is something you dig? The Olive Garden what is it called again? Olive Garden, I think Italian, Italian dressing. dressing. And there's a and look for it on the label there's a big word it says duh. <laughs> <laughs> Was it cream based? Uh, it is a creamy Italian, yeah. But it is, you know what? Less in calories than blue cheese, so there's that. And if it gets <laughs> you to in, eat salad... Less in calories than a brick of lard. You got that going you to, for you. If it gets you to eat salad, hey, there you go. And right. it's a deal, so... That. Okay. But, uh, uh, there. Yeah. So, getting back to the... Uh, yeah, the the... I've gotten offers since I've been 55, so I've been almost 10 years. I've been getting these... But I finally say, hmm... This is interesting. I am winding down now to my 65th birthday, so I have to. Uh, I've got a meeting the first week in April, uh, a phone meeting uh, where I have to figure out all the uh, the different things that I will be uh, getting with my senior citizendom, and uh, and I have to prepare for insurance and what kind of insurance I need to supplement you can get such my great government rates. Medicare with. Yeah, it's gonna be fantastic. And I looked at, but by and large, I went through their big pamphlet that they finally sent me. Big letters in it, lots of big fonts. It's just, it's a coupon company. That's what it is. Yeah, of course. Essentially, it's a oh, coupon discounts company. for days. Yeah, discounts <laughs> doors for days. Uh, I might, just, every month they send you a brand new Walker. You, yeah. You Very don't exciting. have to be a senior citizen to join AARP. Well, right? you could be 55, right? No, you could be in your 20s and join AARP. Well, see, I just thought it was appropriate to join it now. Really? You got, yeah. I, I had no Tremendous idea. Tremendous discounts. I saw a thing that said like dental insurance for fifteen ninety nine a month, and it's like uh, one free checkup and one free filling. You know, that's, I mean, that's well, a lot of it's a ripoff of your, of your yeah. remaining years. A lot of clients just drop their teeth off for that. <laughs> that's, uh, but uh, I am not stressing yet, but get ready for the next couple of weeks where I'm going to have to like noodle all this through. And a lot of people said, prepare three months before, three months before, get ready, three months before. Now, three months before, someone's going to call you and they go. And what the lady said to me is they are going to call me mm. to verify my address. Because everything has been approved. That's everything great. has been well, approved. On behalf of Oscar, myself, and Mac, and yeah. all of America, I want to congratulate you on your AAR penis. Thank you very much. I am proud of my AAR penis. And I hope everyone else is too. Is 65 and, momentous? Well, 65 is usually the, that's the official yeah, senior but for citizen like age. The seasons of a man. Well, in the old days, there was a period of time. Back in the day where there was uh, 
where they would put you out to pasture at 65. Yeah. No, but in, in today's Seasons world. Seasons of a man's life, Mike. <laughs> yes, this is the twi- Autumn. I'm in autumn now. Yes, I'm in stage 70 two, is like the, three. I feel like that's the big birthday. Look, yeah, I, I don't think it's as big of a birthday as it is like a a stepping stone financially or socially. Yeah, right, you know? yeah. right. I all I know is this: that uh, I am I am going to be prepared. I'm going to know how to do what I do, and uh, it's going to change uh, a little bit of my world because I have been complaining for how many years now about being a self-employed individual mm, who yeah. has to get insurance. And even though the insurance covers stuff, uh, it's it's insanity for it's me expensive. to pay. Yeah. Uh, now, if I had stayed on it, two thousand dollars per month mm. with my kids. Mm. Also, with my kid yeah. and my wife, seven hundred eighty three more, eight hundred dollars more. Yeah. So that's, that's like, like three. Th- that's three thousand dollars. It's silliness. Yeah. The mortgage. It's it silly. Mortgage. Because of what sleep apnea, mm. which by the way, I don't use the machine anymore at all. You and probably I, should, if you got cleared of it, your premiums will go down. Yeah. You're probably right. Right? Yeah, if yeah. I had a insurance. I just I got to the point where the phone calls, the dealing with them, I said I will hold off till April, uh, about less than 2 weeks from today that I will be uh dealing with all of it and we'll move forward with uh with everything. Uh one thing I have learned as you weave your way through the system Oscar is that you cannot fight city hall. There are institutions that are larger than you. We are not free by no. any stretch of no. the imagination. And the person sometimes, with the most money wins. Yeah, and sometimes you just have to say, yeah. I, I'm avoiding you now. I don't need the hassle. I'm going to roll the dice for three months and see what happens. Yeah. Or maybe in my case, four months. So that's it. And, and, I, and, and I say the Mike, most come money. Back. We I need say you. the most money, not in like, a, like an evil way. It's just these are facts of life that become very clear as you get older, especially for you young bucks out there that they can afford not just resources, but they, they can afford the legal fees. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Two, if they, if, and if they something will, becomes they ridiculous. They will crush you under yeah. the debt of fees yeah. and transactions. Yeah. Reinstatement fees. Yeah. Of just, if, look. And, That's what it came down to with me. It was a reinstatement yeah, fee for like, their clerical error. And I said, F you. I don't want to deal with that. And really furthermore, they've got people on staff designed to make the process slow and arduous and hoping you'll give up. I, and uh, most people do. Can I make one statement, sure. though? Uh, with Social Security, they sent me my uh, earnings record for my entire life. And, oh, that's uh, wonderful. Oh, my God. I would like to say to the listeners yeah. uh, of this program who have been with me, some of you, for decades, yes. thank you, thank you, thank you. And to everyone else who will benefit from uh, the federal government and the taxes paid by certain individuals, I'd like to say, you're welcome. Do you say one million dollars? <laughs> yeah, that that was uh, that was part of it. Do you? I remember seeing your W two when you were on WJFK. It was how the did most... you see my W two? You crafty bastard! How no, did you do that? How I the want... hell did you see my W? You were saw having my W2. a party at your house. Oh, I and remember. In, and you had the, it framed on and the in wall. The, no. It, <laughs> Because I was so proud of my first big paycheck, I put it on the wall. Just like a bar would put a dollar up on the wall. <laughs> right over the fireplace. And yeah, in W-2 form, Rob. Look at that. Would you like to go into the W-2 room? Take a peek at that well, one. The more you make, the larger the W-2 is in size. Yeah, yes. so it looked like a Price is Right check. Yeah. So you couldn't miss it. Yeah. In, in, in this scenario, which is reality... Mm-hmm. You had, you have, we got, I remember getting there early for the first time in my life because I didn't want to be late to, I didn't know how far Manassas was. I didn't know anything. And those were sunnier days. Yeah. Remember was that, this Rob? when, was remember this when you get to places this is before early? we started, this is before we started the show. Before. Yeah. This is, was this when Mike was hosting the WJFK Christmas party? Yes. 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 Because oh, and Sam company, Rogers never, and Sam Rogers never forgave me for it, forgave yeah. me for it. Because the company Forgive shafted me. us. They wanted to have the Christmas party on like January yes. 18th. And you said, that's nonsense. Mm-hmm. And you rolled out the greatest it was spread. One, it was, it, and we were all excited. And, God, and then, the, the, then like the senior vice president had one uh, for the company in January at his house, and I didn't go. Yeah. And I don't know anyone who never forgave back, me. Back to your party. Yes. Mm-hmm. I was there with Chad. 
and Chad and I were in your kitchen. And then, I, if I'm not mistaken, Chad picked up from your fruit bowl and said, hey, Mike, I don't think you want this hanging out. Just you have people coming over. And he said, what? And I, and I picked it up and I was like, oh, this is your W2. Because it was just it was just in your fruit bowl in your kitchen. And and then and we both looked at it and looked at each other and it was like, doing pretty well. <laughs> doing pretty, pretty well. Wow. It's probably a stub. It was probably a stub, a pay stub. That I, and he that likes I to keep most yeah, of his paperwork. We can do the rough math. We know how paychecks yeah. work. Yeah, he does. He does, leaves most of his paperwork in the fruit bowl at all times, I, so he knows like, where it is. I just when you when you see it all on one page, which yeah, I did, yeah. it's uh, you know makes you it makes you happy, and uh, that's why I'm changing officially legally my uh, my middle name from Sean, which is the Gaelic spelling S E A N. Right. I will be changing my uh, my middle name to Squander. <laughs> That's the, that's yeah, no, what you be. you yeah. went through two marriages that two stock market crashes right yeah I did indeed do you have to I, make taxes on the money you're giving to somebody else uh no you don't as a matter of fact when you're doing it I don't do it any longer right nothing lifetime in this world that's it <laughs> nothing lifetime now all finite that's why people get remarried after they they get remarried after you lose your job. Uh, we will uh, we will take a break and we will come back with more fun and more thrills with a round table that's going to knock your D in the dirt. Wow. I mean it. We'll be right back on the Mike O'Mary show, ladies and gentlemen. You too. This portion of the Mike O'Mary show brought to you by Getting to Be Springtime and Electric e Buy. Yay! That's right, Getting to Be Springtime in the nation's capital. And everyone is looking for one thing. No, mm. not the Pennsylvania Avenue food trucks. With the big styrofoam pretzel hanging from it, you idiot. We're all looking forward to seeing Oscar on his electric e-bike. I rode yes. it in today. Oscar, Did you, today. Okay? you yeah. love it, right? Gorgeous. And, right? Yes. It's, a, it's, an, it's like an iPhone, but a bike. Riders of all abilities can explore with electric e-bikes. Go to electricebikes.com to learn more about their wide selection of e-bikes that start at just $799. That's L E C T R I C ebikes.com. You can save on gas, parking and maintenance and financing starts as low as $49 per month. Plus, electric e-bikes fold up ship free and come pre-assembled and pre-charged. You'll be on the road in no time and it goes 150 miles on one charge. Zang! That's him. Say that online a few more times. It's been a long time since I've said that. Explore 2024 with electric e bikes, the most accessible and adventurous e bikes ever. That's my jingle. Uh, yeah. Visit electricebikes.com to learn more and be sure to mention that Mike O'Mara show sent you in the past, in the pop, uh, uh, yes, yep, yeah, fruit wine. <laughs> And be sure to mention that the Mike O'Mara show sent you in the post checkout. That can be rewritten in the you post all, checkout profe- survey. You're, you're a professional. That's what it is. It's a survey that comes after be the checkout. Be sure to mention that Mike O'Mara show that the, uh, that's l e c t r i c e bikes dot com. Unrewarding. Look, it's the Kraken in Mike's football. All right, uh, let me get the thing up here because I have to play the right stuff at the right time. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we begin today with a story that uh, is near and dear to my heart, a place that I always wanted to visit, but I never had the opportunity. We were close once, and it was a man by the name of Dick Van Patten that might have gotten us in there, but this holds true when you hear this story. The Playboy Mansion was an erotic paradise of unending sexual pleasures. If you were a guy... If you were a woman, you just kind of endured it. That sounds nasty, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, That's how Jenny McCarthy makes her time at the mansion sound. And I have no evidence to probably disagree with that. I would imagine it would be a little icky. Really? Yeah. I would think so. Uh, On Mondays, watch what happens live. She said, quote, there was so much still sex going on with gross celebrities in the grotto areas and stuff like that. There were only hot women and the ugliest dudes. I'm thinking like uh, George (laughs) Siegel. She added that, unfortunately, for every 20 guys, it was one girl. Oh. Oh. So the guys were just in heaven, but also the guys were over 70 years old. Oh, God, they were like really, really old. It was like Viagra Central. Uh, one thing Jenny didn't have to do was have sex with Hef. 
I thought uh, because, those were, that was the rules. Uh, I thought so, too, that anybody yeah. was there. Hef was married to Kimberly Conrad at the time. She says, quote, uh, I was there when his kids were throwing bacon at me in high chairs. It was the perfect time to be mm. there. Uh, she says Pamela Anderson was lucky enough to be around at the same time. So I guess she didn't have to, uh, but she did anyway. So, of course she did, by choice. Um, no, Hef know. loved baby oil, Mike. And if I can jump in here, yes, I don't know that we've ever really pinpointed, or at least recently, why we did not get to go to the Playboy Mansion. Dick Van Patten tried, but this was at an era when we didn't all have cell phones yet. Charlie Broyhill had a cell phone, our producer at the time, and Dick Van Patten had Charlie Broyhill's cell phone number. However, he had it set that it would not ring to unidentified numbers. So Dick Van Patten tried to call Charlie Broyhill. Broyhill's phone filtered it out, and that's why we didn't get to spend an evening at the Playboy Mansion. That is satisfying for you to get that off your chest, isn't it? Yes, it that is. That is satisfying Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. Little behind-the-scenes uh, idiosyncrasies that people had yep. uh, well, that I, were I, know, I, preventing a, us from going there. What's there, that, Oscar? There was a time that that was every young man's dream. Now, it sounds gross now looking back at it, but it does. when you were when I was younger, oh, the God, idea of going too. to a party there was, you know, you've made it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Keep in mind, this was literally about... 30 years ago. It was hard <laughs> to believe, so but true. weird to think about. Yeah, very, very weird. Uh, Lollapalooza, I think, I think my daughter went, uh, announced their starting lineup yesterday. The headliners include Blink-182, SZA, Tyler the Creator, The Killers, Hozier, Future, and Metro Boomin and Skrillex. Did I sound old enough when I was reading those? You did a great job. SZA is SZA. Damn it! I knew it! You I were close, knew that though. I couldn't get through. Thank you. You're God. very I, close. I was not. I said this bit's not going to work unless somebody corrects me. SZA, SZA. How about H O Z I E R? Is it Hosier? Hosier. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like there will be over hosieries. Hosiery. It's not uh, like only that spelled H O Z I E R. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. There will be over 170 artists performing across eight stages. Some of the other artists include all guy K-pop band Stray Kids, Melanie yes! Martinez, Deftones, Victoria Monet, Kesha, and Tate Kesha. McRae. Kesha. Kesha. Sorry. Kesha. Kesha. With a dollar sign. Does it say where they're performing it this year? The uh, four-day festival returns to Chicago's Grant Park from August 1st through the 4th. Tickets, uh, passes, I should say, go on sale tomorrow. So Mike, uh, yeah. Grant Park, also famous in the last few years for Lollapalooza, for concert goers that would go prior to the uh, erecting of the stage and the fencing, and they would bury their booze in the park. So when they would actually get allowed in the park with their tickets, they'd find their booze like a treasure on a treasure map, That's and they would dig it up and drink it. That's funny. fantastic. I wish I still drank. I would do that. Well, Max got an extra job. He'll be out in that park with a metal detector uh, very, very soon, but it can't find the glass. So that's not going to be a big deal. That's not gonna be that. uh, are you one of those responsible adults who gets back uh, zero? You get to zero unread emails every day? Do you get there or are you stacked how many, up? How many do you have right now, do you think, on your phone? I can tell you. Do you have a little, a little guy? I, uh, do you have a little bubble? I do. Okay. Wh uh, what do you have, Rob? 36. Okay. Mike? Uh, hold on. I'm trying. I think we've done this before, but this is embarrassing. It is. It will be zero before I go to bed, though. I think you can see mine, right? If this I'm going to do this. Does this show you? Oh, no! Oscar, no! How many? Read it. 47,129. All right, hold on. Come I get on lists, and they're like, are you interested and moom up, beep up, beep up, moom up. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not interested in that, sir. That's not even what we do. Is that why you haven't replied about coming over to number. my house this Friday? Are you having I have the number. No. Oh. <laughs> you have I, a number? Uh, I am, uh, my page is one through 50 of 52,171. Yeah, that's about right. yeah, 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 yeah. That, that literally nauseates me when I see um, that. I can't stand that. Why? Charlie, it's because of Bernie. the OCD in me, I just Bernie. I can't imagine. He's inbox zero. He yeah. does right. what you're talking about. I don't think my life would change at all if I went to inbox zero. 
Mm -hmm. uh, like after the last 50, I like to know what's, you know, recent yeah, coming recent, through. Yeah. What is the way of, uh, and I sure I would free up space, I imagine. Yeah, you correct? can do a group oh, delete. You can do a massive group delete and get rid of all of them. Like with a couple of clicks, I can do it? Yeah. All right. I'll, yeah. Uh, I'll I think if you on. hold the... No, we're I think not going to do that shift right. bar and, and I'm not going to do it no, now. No, no. Uh -uh. I wasn't planning on doing it. It would take now. us off the air. I wouldn't do that. That's not going to happen. So that's fit. How many do you have, Oscar? Over 10,000. 10,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just don't uh, go in and clean it up. That's, that's uh, yeah. I get, I, I get, I just get a lot of junk mail. The, and it's not, it's not something I'm proud of. The people that have inbox, either. the people that have inbox zero. Oh, like my wife has inbox zero. Yeah. Charlie Bernie has in inbox zero. Or Elizabeth Elson, who's our VP here, has inbox zero. They're just they're just built that way. Have and you even gotten back? Have you gotten back to the Nigerian prince? Oscar? No, no, no. I haven't had Good time. God, he's waiting on you, man. A uh, new study found that letting it stay cluttered might be affecting you and your mental health more than you realize. It found that people who let emails build up or use their inbox like a to do list uh, are more likely to forget about stuff and let it fall to the wayside. And uh, that can be a problem when it's something like a reminder to pay a bill. Uh, they found that a cluttered inbox can leave you feeling flustered and disorganized all the time. Nope. And it could even be costing you hundreds of dollars a year uh, in things like unnecessary late fees. That's I true. So. Though I, got backup. Is, I got back. Everything okay. is uh, autom automated, right? It just, just goes. 52% uh, of people with cluttered inboxes, they say, Claim they like the way they do things. I, I'm not no. averse to change. I'll, I'll clean it up. Yeah. Like I to. like the way I do things. Yeah. For the uh, inbox zero crowd, 71% like it that way. Of course they do because they're ninjas yeah. in a way. You know? And then I, I, I do envy it. I, when I see people go to inbox zero and I know they're busy, and I'm like, oh, I don't know how you do it. It's crazy. Mm. Uh, and they probably, I would imagine, edit a lot too. Because if you edit, if you have inbox you can zero, fill, you, you can your edit filters. out the crap, and you yeah, can you can unsubscribe uh, yeah, you, to a lot. That of That Shannon does that at a very high level. Mm -hmm. I like reading if I need uh, certain growth pills. Like I need, I need to know. You need to know this. What the yeah, deal is, yeah. mm -hmm. right? That's right. Absolutely, Penis. Uh, let's move on, shall we? A real estate agent in Australia <laughs> got into some hot water a while back. When she accidentally burned a multi-million dollar property to the ground. That is all over the place. I'm that going between African. South Africa yeah. and... Uh, when she accidentally burned to the ground while preparing for an open house. The house had renters at the time and the agent was running around tidying up a few things. She noticed some bedding that was hanging out back to dry and thought it looked bad. So she balled it up, took it downstairs and threw it on a shelf under a lamp. Then she turned the lamp on. About 20 minutes later, a major fire broke out and a majority of the house was burned down. Burned to the studs. Mm. Right down to the bloody studs. That's Oi. what ruined That's what ruined the first cat, remember? It was a rag fire. Oily rags burned down the nightclub. They later determined that it started because of the bedding in the basement light. Apparently, the light heated the blankets up, which were right up against it. They caught fire, and it tore through the entire house down to the studs. Blimey. The company she worked for was ordered to pay damages to both the homeowner and the renters who lost their belongings in the fire. Mm. And then she was made to have sex with a roo oh. out in the <laughs> outback. Once a jolly swag man camped by a billabong under the shade of a coolie board tree. And he sang as he watched and waited till his billy boil. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. Thank you. Last story. Uh, a bartender in Florida is making a, a very good living slapping spring breakers in the face. You hold it, Mike. You mean he's slapping them in their Freeze! Freeze! If you've never heard of a hurricane shot, that's what it is. Most of her customers are men, but she'll slap women too for $30. Nice. You take a shot, you have a pitcher of water thrown in your face, and you get slapped in the face hard. She's been selling up to $6,000 worth of shots per night. Do you have the video of this? I do not have the video of this. All right. Maybe tomorrow we can show you the video. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Get yeah. Mac the video. You have access to it. Of and, course. Uh, you know, uh, by the way, getting slapped in the face after drinking a shot. You know what we call that at O'Mara's? What? Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, 
Well, all right. White traffic lights. Ooh. Yes. Just another story about white things that Rob wanted on the Stop show. Stop it. How dare Always you. Always the way. How dare you. We'll do that when we come back on the Mike O'Mara Show. Whoa, whoa, everybody. Are you ready to shed 26% of your weight? Hmm? Are you? Let's go. Dermglowskin.com is the ultimate destination for conquering your weight. Wait. Just take a look at their quiz on the website and discover if you qualify. Experienced doctors will prescribe the right medication and your weight loss solution will be delivered directly to your doorstep. Tired of waiting due to low stocks? Dermglow ensures that you're connected with well-supplied doctors, mm. eliminating any delays. People have rave reviews like, listen to this one, it's life-changing, it's a game-changer, five stars all the way. It's like finding the cure to the common cold. It's amazing. And how about this? Thanks for your affiliation with Chiral. I'm so happy, 45 pounds down and feeling so healthy, I feel like myself again. I still have a few LBs to go, but I'm on my way, and I'm able to do it. Your future awaits you. Visit DermGlowSkin.com, click the weight loss button, and kick off the best journey of your life. Because with DermGlow, you can do it. Yeah, Rob brought uh, something to our attention. Oscar doesn't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. Uh, I have no idea what he's doing. What are white goes, traffic lights? Mike, it goes to a North Carolina State University. Of course it's the South. Of course and, it's the Deep South. Man, you know what? Open your mind, Daddy-O. Because mm -hmm. okay. this is going to change the way traffic flows in big cities. So they say. Now, you are familiar with the modern traffic light. It goes red. I guess they call it amber and green, right? What, what are they again? Red, amber, and green? A yellow no. and green? Yeah. No, no I, I don't know what you're talking about. Did you know that that was an international accord that dates back to 1931? I knew that. To the way traffic lights should be. I knew that. This would, this, did you really? I I'm had no lying. idea. <laughs> this would be the first major change to the way traffic lights are set up since 1931, almost 100 years ago. The white traffic light will be added, and what it is... It is a sensor that picks up on autonomous automobiles, self-driving mm. cars. And when there are enough autonomous automobiles in that traffic area, the white traffic light will indicate whether the autonomous vehicle should go or stop, knowing that the cars behind it will also go or stop. So it is going to use actual automobiles in the field to move traffic or stop traffic to maximize flow this will only work excitement we have today <laughs> what was that huh that, that that beautiful sound just a little punctuation mark but think that of wasn't that. my phone playing oh. through my computer okay uh but think i'm lying <laughs> this is a new segment called mike is lying i'm lying can you rewind here you're saying yeah. these lights do what they Pick up whether or not there are autonomous self-driving vehicles in the area or the range of these traffic lights, okay? Mm -hmm. The white light will serve only the autonomous vehicles, telling them whether to stop or go. Will it and cost by, any more money? It won't cost you any more money, except via taxes, I'm sure. So but it'll stay the same. It'll stay the same. The, yes, the rent stay the, stays like a buffer. But it's wild to think that this is like putting drivers out there they're not drivers putting vehicles out there that will control the flow of traffic this will eliminate people zooming through yellow lights this will eliminate people hitting red lights and going through them because there's going to be a car in front of them so if they want to run a red light they got to hit the car and it's going to be a while before there are enough self-driving vehicles out there for this to become practical but according to the studies at this north carolina state university this is going to optimize traffic flow and Cities like New York and Washington, D.C. that constantly have gridlock. I hadn't heard about it. I think it's pretty wild. I Do we need cool. it, though? Well, if it can maximize the way it, you get out of the city at 5 o'clock on, on a week on a weekend. Uh, weeknight. Is this similar to what I've always thought that the most ridiculous thing with modern technology, when you come to a four-way intersection, and there are not uh, the other three directions. There are no cars coming. You sit there through the whole cycle right. when it should be able to sense you. This is going to be able to do that. Yes, if there are autonomous vehicles in the area. Yeah, that's but that's what, to me. 
that but why do there have to be autonomous vehicle? Why can't it have a sensor that picks up on the car like you would have well, well, in any gated community mm-hmm. in America? Mike, you're right. I the, agree, yeah. The archaic uh, sensors that are currently in most uh, city infrastructures, as, as far as I know, where there's a weight-bearing issue where mm-hmm. the weight actually adds to the traffic cycle or there's one sensor on one of the lights but not all the lights, Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, that is not something that I believe yet, and we're ha- happy to be corrected, is ubiquitous and as you know, turnkey as it should be. Like You should be able to pull up to a light I thought it should have been a long time yes. ago we would have been. Yeah, there. correct. You know, because right. there's technology that way that does so many different things. On an you know? e-bike, you do whatever you want, I've been told. <laughs> Electric e-bike? Electric e-bike. Electric wow. e-bike, you can go through all the interstates. You, I, I mean, they, they don't tell you you should do this. As long as you don't get hit. From yeah. Schmosker Fantana, if there's nobody around, yes. it's your choice if mm-hmm. you want to follow the rules or not. Is it? Uh, is it do, the, do the traffic cops deal with it like it's a bicycle? No, not a motorized vehicle. No, uh, you. This is what at least I can talk about Washington D.C. Okay, that's what they've I got bigger about. fish to fry. Whether you're a car <laughs> or a right. bike, you can do whatever you want. I uh, look. If they're going to be white traffic lights, I think the last place they'll be is Washington D.C. Well, yeah, it could be. Well, you know, the, uh, you know. But well, the come uh, on, come you know, on. No, no, I, Chalk and City. Like yeah. We know this. I live here. But Oscar, as a tech guy, do you think that there will be enough autonomous vehicles on the road in the near future, not the near future, but the distant future, that they can use them as virtual traffic cops by letting them talk to the I don't think there are. There there will be. in cities. There there will will eventually, but I think this is like, this to me is what Apple and some of the other big tech companies do, where they get ahead of their skis. And I don't like it. I wish they would just go step by step by step. And the technology to have sensors on traffic lights at intersections where uh, you could help the traffic flow by eliminating people having to wait when there's no one coming right. in either direction, mm-hmm. you know, and then you're coming over the hill and you're like, oh, I'm not going to make it. This that is, would be, you know, it'd be fun. It'd be more fun to speed that way, too. This is yeah, big true. autonomous. Uh, I like watching the cars driving through San Francisco without a driver uh, on the news. I hate mm-hmm. to see them being vandalized by people that hate autonomous cars because they think they're evil and they're going to take over the world. Right. Uh, but, but I think we're closer than, than you think, Mike, I think we're, we're probably cause they're in Phoenix right now. They're in uh, California. And I think we're probably five years away from seeing them in DC and Baltimore, et cetera. What um, I love about autonomous uh, vehicles is they had one now wasn't a, a person on it, but it was able to deliver products, foods, yeah, yeah, yeah. messages like that. And they had it, entirely programmed to drive across country until it got to Philadelphia and they destroyed it. Blew it up. Philly hated the robot. I don't like autonomous vehicles. I like anonymous vehicles. <laughs> you know, full, full t- uh, tinted out. Uh, no, you just drive your ass off and you drive it like a maniac and it never tells anybody who it is. Got it, got it. Who is that I used guy? to have a, I used to have a coworker that he would get in his car. Yes. And this is how anti-establishment he was. He would put his seatbelt on prior to sitting in his car and sit on top of the seatbelt. Oh, so it's across the seat. Yeah. And I, okay. So so then you go beep, 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 beep. You wouldn't get that. And I said, uh, so-and-so like, what's the story with no seatbelt? He's like, the government can't tell me what to do in my own property. Wow. And, uh, that man is now, uh, running for president. That's right. (laughs) That employee was Donald Jonathan Trump. Dumb. Do you think you have to be to think that you're making a stand in your car? Yeah. What is putting... the thing where the guys get arrested and they don't cooperate with the police? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, God, there's a name for these guys. Oh, my God, they're all over Florida. And they said, I don't have to give you my information. I don't have to roll down. Oh, my yeah. I don't yeah. know. Am I being arrested? Am I being held? You say, And you want to talk about self-control from, for some of these men in blue? It's like everything else. The, big air, the area is so gray. But, man, the, the patience... Of saints, these men and women in blue that have to deal with these asshats. That uh, and there's a name I'll get. Mac, you, you, what are, you you should know this. Contempt it, of cop. It's Ooh, not contempt of cop. Guy. That's okay, a that's name for what I they found. do. But there is a there, there's a. It's like a movement of yeah, people exactly that resist about. arrest I, and uh, I, it's not. Go it's to not this even website, there. Mac. ConsumptionJunction.com. Junction. Uh, get my reverb. Hold on just a second. All right. All right. Yep. What do you see? 
Putting up words and making them function. It's Mike yes. is Jack Sheldon. <laughs> Boo! How do you become Perfect. a Bill? God, that was great. Thank you. That's my favorite part of it right there. I'm that. just kidding, Mac. That's an adult site. You get uh, <laughs> I knew you were doing that, but I didn't want to wreck it. Uh, speaking of uh, tech, I want to talk some more about tech. Let's take a break. We'll come okay. back and uh, robots in the news, AI in the news. I, I saw a clip on, on the news last night of a robot tesla's doing it bmw is doing it everybody the big companies are doing it right now manufacturing these guys i want to talk to gadget man over here about the future of our world did you know that 80 percent of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime get ahead of it with nutrafol a clinically tested hair growth supplement for men Take their hair wellness quiz at Nutrafol.com slash men for a personalized hair health plan based on your specific root causes. Get it? Root causes? Ah. You can purchase online with no prescription or doctor's visits required. Free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day. Thanks to Nutrafol, Oscar is seeing thicker hair. We can feel his Latin heat. You can like to feel my Latin heat? Yes, my, my Guatemalan heat. Uh, he's not. He's Bolivian. Uh, surging through the internet. Nutrafol, the number one Ooh. dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand with over one million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code TMOS. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men and enter promo code TMOS. That's Nutrafol dot com slash men, promo code TMOS. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Last night, I can't tell you where it was done or what news program I was watching, but I and I might have seen the clip on YouTube, but it was recent. A guy standing in front, uh, right out of the movies, a, an AI robot. Mm. He has a table in front of the robot. On the table are a couple of dishes and a couple of uh, pieces of uh, drinkware, plastic cups, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he sits there and has a conversation with the robot, and then he says, listen to me, could you uh, throw this trash away? And he throws trash up on the table. And he says, could you throw this trash away while you're telling me uh, how you did putting the glasses away? And you see the robot start to move the trash into the barrel and go, I think I did a very good job putting that trash. What they were trying to show was mm. the human brain capabilities of AI where he's multitasking at the same time, which up until now, you don't see a lot of robots. You, know, you can say, you know, lift your arm or press a button or you can pre-program it. But this not only had that component, but it had a voice track mm -hmm. and the voice track stammered. So you'd say, I, uh, and it was one of the most fascinating pieces of video I've seen. And I think last night I really, really, really saw how close we are to having a future where, can you imagine you'd have, everybody would have like a person in their house to do the mundane tasks that we don't want like to do. Like iRobot. With. Yeah. It'd be amazing. Yeah. It would be absolutely amazing. They also how is turn the on robot? robot. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Did the robot, how did it locomote? Could it walk? Did it, it roll? Didn't, it didn't locomote because it was standing in front of this table and it was doing uh, like a bartender arm, almost. arm uh, you know, exercises. I and, see. I see. Uh, it would be, the, the thing that, that, that amazed me is when it had it do a task, either the putting the plates away or throwing out the garbage and talking about another subject. And that was when I said, oh, this is really, uh, oh, at one point, he asked the robot, how do you think you did? Which mm. was an opinion question. Yeah. And it was just, and look, when you're watching that, you don't know how much of this is prearranged, but yeah, it's, you know, it, it's pretty cool it, it's, stuff. It's the, just the beginning. Um, At I robot. Think, I think I mentioned NVIDIA stock here when it was like at 300 bucks. It's now almost at $900 within the span of a year. Uh, and we were talking about AI here on the show. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and... And I'm not saying that, like, you know, a scroll, uh, you know, a blind scroll be, be, will find a nut once, at least twice in a day. But I was, I was pretty. Is that like, how it goes? No. Something I like that. I think the saying Probably. is even a blind squirrel can find a nut once in a while. Yes. Yeah. 
That's mm-hmm. what I said. You no. said something about twice in a day. Twice in a day. Isn't that yeah. once in a while? No. And why You're double it? the broken clock. A broken clock. Oh, damn it. Mac, yeah. did you ever find out anything? Did you find anything yeah, today? Uh, First Amendment auditors. No, that's not it. Oh, that's Oscar, uh, uh, like Mac, the animal you... otter? No, aud- no auditors. First Amendment. That's, okay, that's what I know. That's... That's what I've seen is is people who audit the police and did you look so anything get up? The first man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I found. This is a Washington Post article. Oh. Right. Mac, how, how do you, you think democ- you did? The democracy dies in the darkness. <laughs> how do you think you did? How do you think you did? Thank you, Oscar. I think we don't say that enough. Yes. Um, guys, <laughs> uh, my Sorry. sayings are terrible. You know what I mean. The AI situation is like it's a clear and present danger. Now, we have to choose if we want uh, like exponential computing power and um, to autom- automate everything in our lives for what would be perceived as a friction-free life, or we want to actually govern this AI so it doesn't make us irrelevant. That's the mm-hmm. choice. It's not going to make us irrelevant if we just have it emptying the dishwasher, though. Well, but see, this is this goes back to the space program conversation. It, that you hate the space program, but that technology has now led to other technologies like a cell phone, right? Sure. And if your cell phone becomes a smartphone that becomes a little computer in your hand, then it becomes self-aware. And then uh, we've seen already at a high clip how people are either embracing AI in the workplace or they're just you know pretending it doesn't exist and they're letting themselves be eroded out of the marketplace. Mm. True. And and that's that's the thing. Like we just can't ignore it. Now, am I am I adopting? Am I in? Am I and I do I believe in the future? Yes. But it is scary the level of within the year, Mike, of proof of concept that these type of robots have come. And I think the best example outside of Mike's that I just heard today was this morning on CNBC, where Jim Cramer was um he was talking to the CEO of uh, Jensen Young from NVIDIA. He's a robot. Uh, he has, and, has been for years. And he said that um, there's a robot that was like making him a drink, essentially. And he tells the robot uh, that he wants a martini shaken, not stirred. And in any other sense and world of, of you say shaken, not stirred, you know, it's James Bond. James of course. Bond, right. Yeah. He said, so the robot makes it. But in the future, the robot will come back with a, a Goldfinger uh, quip. Like he'll have a personality. So the AI has learned that he likes the James Bond profile, and then in the middle of the night, the guy wakes up and the robot's standing over his bed, and he looks down and he says, he's got like a razor blade, and goes, no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing, but isn't the, it? The evolution of the AI through my lens has come so much faster and more furious than I ever because, imagined. Because... Even the people with the biggest brains in our society, and believe it or not, if you watch the local news, you would think they don't exist anywhere. But if you really do a deep dive, there are people that are thinking and solving problems and creating medicines and doing wonderful things each and every day, even if Rob doesn't like the space program. Mm -hmm. They are smart people that are out there doing things each and every day. But the point is that this is about as sexy as it gets with technology when you're thinking about creating something that is human like mm-hmm. with its activities yeah. and its brain and all that and that's why i think this is fast tracked because it's attainable with ai and and they want to get it as soon as they can but sure. the rushing as you mentioned rushing to this without thinking it through who knows i think sci- science fiction is uh, can be real in some regards where this gets out of control yeah, I, really I, can I say something? Yeah, oh, yes. oh, yeah. Hi, Mac. Hi, Mac. Hi, Oscar. So, I mean, first off, there is no sign that any AI so far is self-aware. They can pretend to be, um, like the the chatbots. They 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 seem like they are, but they are just mimicking chat by humans. If a human would say it, it can say it, but that doesn't mean it is self-aware. No AI so far, I believe has shown signs of self-awareness. Well, if you, know, so, you be as comfortable with that as you can. Everybody's uh, yeah. everybody's cool as a cucumber until a homeowner gets thrown off a balcony. Or yeah. you, it's touching its toes when you're touching your toes. Mm-hmm. What? What? 
That's like well, that means show. it's gonna it's yeah, gonna come yeah, up and back yeah. you when you're you know yeah. hopping out of the shower or something like right. that. Right, unless you're into it, oh, God. like a real doll. Yeah, Help that's me. learned behavior, Max. So you be careful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, absolutely. Thank you. All right, good luck. Uh, we have to take a break, and when we come back, we've got uh, how's your flip side today, Rob? It is so strong. I my back hurts. That's exciting. Uh, we're gonna come back with uh, the flip side, all sorts of different tapes, and I still I looked Mac too. I couldn't find the name of the people I was talking about. Uh, but they're weird. Cop watchers? Uh, they're, no. no. Some, yeah, that's the only two. Some I like uh, really bad thousand, yeah. revolutionary thing. Uh, hey, fuel your peak performance with <laughs> Four Wellness, the ultimate functional food brand. Four Wellness was founded by Phil Mickelson and renowned performance coach Dave Phillips. It's a game changing performance coffee supplement. You can elevate your brew with just one scoop for enhanced focus, reduced caffeine jitters, increased collagen and fat burning support. But that's not all. Dive into their recovery gummies, packed with antioxidants and electrolytes. Rob's, you haven't eaten them all? The whole tray? Maybe I ordered some more because I like them a lot. Perfect for, uh, and Rob doesn't care about health. He just likes the flavor. Perfect for pre-workout or post-golf recovery. Need a sweet treat? Try the superfood focus bites that taste like a chocolate brownie. For Wellness makes it easy to integrate high-quality functional ingredients into your daily routine. Plus, with a risk-free 60-day money-back guarantee, what do you got to lose? So, if you drink coffee, it's time to give 4 Wellness a try. Head to 4wellness.com slash TMOS and use code TMOS for 25% off your order. Again, that's 4wellness.com slash TMOS for 25% off. And make sure you use our promo code TMOS so they know that we sent you. Julia. Hello. There you are. Mike, do you know what I mean when I say bro country? I would imagine it's something to do with a, a place where all your, your homies are, your, your your mates. No, it's a variety of music that's popular on the charts right oh, now. Oh, I love bro country. Bro country. Yeah. Um, and like what? Uh, is it Morgan Whalen? He's one of them. Uh, I think that our Morgan buddy- Freeman? Not Morgan no, Freeman, no. but I do believe that our buddy Luke Bryan is sort of the yes, head uh, yeah. of Bro Country, and they sort of uh, carry a personality. And like they rock turn country out, almost. Yeah, they turn out a lot of records, and they do very well on top. Red, 40. white, and blues. Morgan it's, Whalen. Yeah, we said that. I think. Uh, who else? Whalen Flowers and Madam. <laughs> Whalen. I actually have Shannon's <laughs> into Bro Country. I have a bunch of artists on my on my phone because of her. Well. They did a an AI study of what bro country would sound like to someone who has never heard bro country before. And this tickled me no end. And of course, the voice on this AI experiment is Luke Bryan. Of course it is. So this is bro country to people who don't like bro country. Truck jeans, beer, girl, creek boots, truck, tan legs, train, dog, beer, Dixie cup. Got a beer in my beer and a Chevy in my truck. Got a dog at the wheel, cut off jeans, truck. Dirt road, back road, beer, moonlight, red, white, and blue, girl, Friday night. I got my boots in the dirt. Got the dirt from a dirt road beneath my truck. Got the I got dirt from my girl. She's got the dirt. dirt. I got the dirt. Got the dirt like from the truck. I, got the I think it could hit. I thought Kenny Chesney was the godfather. You can kill it, Mac. I thought he was the godfather of uh I got of the dirt country. from a dirt in a dirt road in my yeah. truck. Zach Bryan is my That's go-to. a good one, yeah. I At wonder if he would sing <laughs> Dirt Girl Beer Truck. It's <laughs> yeah. a good Jimmy. song. Yeah. Um, all right. We all love New Orleans. And I think that it was Julia who described it to me. She had her first trip there when we did the live show. She says, Dad, this is like dirty Disney World. I said. <laughs> that, did, was that her? Was I, that believe her I believe it was. Dirty Disney World is hysterical. That's and great. I said, you're right. New Orleans, it, it's not oh very God. clean. And so there is a problem at the police. I guess it's the chief of police and the head jailer in New Orleans. And they do a lot of police action down there. Oh, do that. You just got to watch out, Mike. It's dirty. Watch out for the high rats. The uncleanliness is um, off the charts, but it's even health issues such as mold in these buildings, uh, rodent infestation. 
People shouldn't have to come to their office and see rodent drippings on their desk. That is not valuing your people. In the evidence property room, major rodents uh, on the floor, the cockroaches, the rats eating our marijuana, they're all high. <laughs> God almighty. Sounds like a fun afternoon at work. Fine. Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. I need you out of, exterminator comes in, need you out of here immediately. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm so, where's the cheese? <laughs> Gross. I'm wow. so hungry. Let's skip down to the woman versus the middle schoolers, Mac. Now, this is a lady. Oscar, you sent me to this, and I thank you for doing so. She was on TikTok complaining about how biting. Com- She's a teacher, teacher of middle school students. and Middle, middle school? Hard. Yeah. And that the comments from middle schoolers can be so... Biting, but when oh, you're biting. right. Oh, biting. I thought you were talking about middle schoolers that are sinking their teeth into No, people. no, no. The comments are very oh. acerbic. Yeah. You, and you set that up in a weird yeah. way. I, I they don't can know. be rude. I'm a, I'm a weird guy. Rude. Uh, but so they are very rude. The comments are very oh, tough Oh, I know on that. Them. I'm already seeing the table being set for that. Absolutely. But, but, Mike, when you're right, you're right. Okay. The thing about middle schoolers is that they will violently humble you, like shake you to your core. And for them, it's just a regular Thursday. I had multiple students tell me today that I looked like Shrek. And the worst part is that I don't even think they're wrong. There she is. <laughs> no. Can we go to that picture, Matt? That the is one the that whole video. Because at the end, they do the long shot. I don't know if she went and found the dress, but that is hysterical. And that's he just, was dressed I, like Shrek. And she she's really funny, was, and it probably was yeah. sad. And that, but she is magnificent. You know, that's so a great funny. teacher. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's got to be that's a that is a great teacher. That's somebody that loves her kids when when she does that. I, it totally I, that took is, me for a ride. When oh, I saw it did. That. It was spectacular. It. So Absolutely thank you for wonderful. sending that, Oscar, and mm-hmm. and kudos to all teachers out there. Now. We are in the middle of the the March Madness. Is NCAA your bracket tournament. still good? Yeah. Yeah. No bracket busters yet. No, I okay. didn't do it. I didn't either. Um, so after that, you know, we used we, to have to. Let's be honest. All right. Oh God, yes. We, yeah, used, to be, we used to be not forced to. Not in years. What's that? Not in years. Not in years. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's the whole reason for me. Yeah, I liked like when the picks to. were handed to me to coordinate, and they were written in Sharpie like a letter. Yeah. It was the most impossible. I don't like it. But following that, oh yeah, we would get brackets on the old show, and they would just be written by like toddlers. Yes. What is that? You know, excuse me. Uh, can you call somebody in my office, please? You know, ask one of the interns. Ask one of the interns if they know how to spell Xavier. Can you do that for me, please? Thank so, you. So um, after the uh, March Madness, I guess we start with the NBA finals and then it's off to the Olympics in France. And good news about the Parisian Olympics, Mike. This year, we're going to close with this. Because that they've got all the COVID under control, the intimacy ban is over. And then after the tournament, we go into the NBA Finals and right into the Summer Olympics, which are going to be very different uh, this time around. Now that the pandemic is behind us, the officials running the Olympic Village in Paris have lifted the intimacy ban that was put in place for athletes in 2021. They're planning to distribute 300,000 condoms, which works out to about 21 condoms per athlete, which... <laughs> You know, if you're having that much sex during the Olympics, you're probably going to miss the Olympics. You should. <laughs> that's all I have for you today, Mike. <laughs> hey, that's it. We got to get out of here. We'll be back uh, tomorrow with a brand new episode. Hey, don't forget, folks. See these right here? Uh, they go on sale on Friday. This is the, uh, I don't want to call it royal blue. I don't like royal blue. Uh, it's blue blue. It's the it's Windsor Mara blue. Eye blue. What's that? Windsor blue. Windsor blue. Windsor blue. Red lettering. White piping. Mm, there you go. Uh, they go on sale on Friday. For Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, Michael Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Michael Mara Bonus Show. Get it at michaelmarashow.com. Michael Mara Radio Entertainment. Unfunny humor. I'm sorry. That will never happen again, and I'm sorry.